Sponsored by Brilliant. Just when I thought I was out, you pulled me back in. Yeah, I did pretty much every single MacBook Pro comparison I could think of. Hit subscribe to see them all. But I didn't do the 16 inch MacBook Pro versus the 13 inch because I figured anyone who wanted the 16 inch would know it. But that didn't stop you all from asking and asking and asking. So I'm Rene Ritchie and this is the MacBook Pro 13 inch versus 16 inch fight. While the 13 inch MacBook Pro just got updated, I'm guessing the design part simply never got the memo. It's still pretty much the same look and build that it debuted with back in October of aught 16. Same boxy unibody aluminum chassis, same silver and space gray options, same four USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports on the higher end model only, and same 13.3 inch display. The 16 inch MacBook Pro, well, late last year, it went all the way to 16 inches. Not much changed, granted. It's also still got the same boxy unibody aluminum chassis, silver and space gray options, and four USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports as it debuted with back in 2016. But the display has been stretched out from 15.4 to 16 inches, not just to reduce the bezels, but to increase the usable workspace. And in an age where competing laptops are going full on edge to edge, it's currently the only MacBook Apple has that's coming even close to keeping up. The difference between the 13.3 inch and 16 inch displays doesn't just come down to size alone. Not quite. Sure. One is 2560 by 1600 and the other is 3072 by 1920, but they're both LCD, both 500 nits of brightness, both wide P3 color gamut, and both have true tone ambient color matching. The subtle difference is that the 16 inch can change refresh rates between 16 hertz and 48 hertz. So if you produce video like I do for this channel in glorious 24 frames per second, say it with me, the way nature and Hollywood intended, you can set the 16 inch display to properly show it to you that way while you're editing. Which is, yeah, nice to have more than critical to have, but it really is super, super nice to have. The 13 inch though, by virtue of being only 13 inches, is a tiny bit thinner, almost three inches skinnier, over an inch less deep and over a pound lighter. So if size and refresh rate matters to you, get the 16 inch. If portability is more important, get the 13 inch. Let's just get this part all the way out of the way. Both the 13 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pro have the same terabad 720p webcam that's okay in full light, but bad and worse in backlight and low light. And pretty much everyone wants Apple to apply their iOS prowess to fixing it and soon. The speakers on the 13 inch though aren't bad. In fact, they're pretty good. High dynamic range, wide stereo, spatial audio, even Dolby Atmos. They make it sound like whatever you're listening to is right up in front of you. The speakers on the 16 inch though are on another level. Like Apple shoved a HomePod right under the keyboard another level. And they make it sound like whatever you're listening to is all around you. Same with mics. The 13 inch has a three mic array that's okay for video calls in a pinch. The 16 inch has a three mic array that's tuned for a high signal to noise, what Apple calls studio quality and what I call the equivalent to a mid range dedicated USB mic which is okay for even podcasting or voiceover in a pinch. And yes, both still have their 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. So if you want the best sound available to you, you want the 16 inch. The new high end 13 inch MacBook Pro, and I'm really only going to focus on the new high end model for this, starts off with a two gigahertz quad core Intel 10th gen core i5, but you can spec it up all the way to a 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7. The 16 inch starts off with a 2.6 gigahertz hexa-core Intel 9th gen Core i7 and can go all the way up to a 2.4 gigahertz octa-core i9. Yeah. Moreover, the high-end 13 inch only comes with Intel Iris Plus graphics, where the 16 inch has Intel HHD graphics 630, but also comes with a discrete AMD Radeon Pro 5300M and can be upgraded to a Radeon Pro 5500M. Both do have the same T2 ARM based coprocessor for touch ID, voice activated Siri, camera and mic security, real time encryption, accelerators, controllers, and all the other custom Apple Silicon advantages. But neither have Wi Fi 6, because Apple, while jumping right on into it in iOS, seems to be staying the hell away from it on the Mac. And both promise the same 10 hours of battery life for light workloads, which means roughly the same for heavy workloads as well. 
So if performance matters more to you than portability, the 16-inch MacBook Pro is just gonna give you more performance. The latest 13-inch MacBook Pro update means the high-end models now start at 16 gigabytes of RAM and can finally, if finally is fair here, go all the way up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Likewise, the storage now starts at 512 gigabytes, but can also finally, also fair here, go all the way up to four terabytes of SSD. The 16-inch though, the 16-inch also starts at 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD, but can go all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and eight terabytes of SSD, eight terabytes. So if you wanna run just all the virtual machines and simulators or super pro apps, or you wanna keep a ton of pro projects and pro content on your internal drives, then you're gonna want the 16-inch MacBook Pro. One of the most important updates to the 13-inch MacBook Pro is the new Magic Keyboard, the same one the 16-inch MacBook Pro got late last year. That means they both now have the new scissor switches, which maintain some of the stability people liked about the butterfly switches, but restore more travel and, so far, more reliability, which is what people hated about those butterfly keyboards to begin with. And that means they also both have distinct escape keys now, touch bars, combined touch ID and power buttons, and inverted T arrow keys. So while this category is a draw, it's an excellent category to draw. The new high-end 13-inch MacBook Pro starts at $17.99 US. That's for the four port 10th gen model, which can go all the way up to $35.99 US with all the bells and whistles. The 16-inch MacBook Pro starts at $23.99 US, but because graphics, RAM, and SSD can go much, much higher, you can bell and whistle it all the way up to $60.99 US. Now, some people have complained that the price difference between the 13-inch and the 16-inch isn't really that different, but okay. There is absolutely an overlap, especially if you tilt your head and squint and look at just that overlap, but you're not really paying per inch here. For some pros, they already have a Mac Pro or iMac Pro at home or at work and just really want something as light and capable as possible to travel with. For other pros, they work almost exclusively while mobile, so they want the biggest screens and highest performance possible when mobile. And yeah, at the ultra pro level, they typically charge hardware purchases to clients and pay them off with a few or even one big job. So things like portability versus performance are far more important to them than price. They're willing to pay for either one, whatever they need. If you're far more value conscious though, and price is important to you, the 13 inch MacBook Pro starts lower much lower at the lower end. Now, I'll sum things up in a hot second, but I'm once again gonna tap into a neural network to make sure I'm comparing things all upright and proper. And sure, this brilliant course is meant to help me find my keys, but MacBook Pros just have to be the same, right? Here's how it works. As I look through the features, the tiles changed colors, revealing how close or far my last guess was from the perfect MacBook Pro for me, and then, even if I have no clear indication how to structure my guesses, I can still get better round after round, figuring out my strategy based on the feedback and finding the best MacBook possible in surprisingly few guesses. Whether you're a student looking to get ahead while school's out, a professional who wants to brush up on the latest and most important topics, or someone who just wants to learn how the future is really gonna work, brilliance, brilliance is taking complex concepts and breaking them up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. You start by having fun with their interactive puzzles, but over time, what you can accomplish is just really amazing. To learn more, go to brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie and sign up for free. Be one of the first 200 people, and you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for your support. So, if you need to do pro-level work on a Mac while mobile, and you don't wanna carry a pound or an inch more than you have to, everything else be damned, then you wanna carry the 13-inch MacBook Pro. But if you need to do most of your pro-level work on a Mac while mobile, and you need the absolute best Mac possible regardless of size or weight, or you just want the better audio and graphics, then you want the 16-inch MacBook Pro. At least, that's what I think. Now I wanna hear from you. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell so we can hang out and chat in the comments for the first hour right after the videos go live. Then hit up those comments and let me know. 13 inch or 16 inch, which is the right MacBook Pro for you? Thanks for watching and for more great videos on the Mac, check out this playlist right here, maybe here. See you next video.